Hello friends and welcome to the first video in a tutorial series that I'll be going through aimed at beginners with VR Interaction Framework. At the request of a subscriber, uh, they asked that I did more of an in-depth beginner tutorial and I thought what better place to start than the very beginning. So you've weighed your options and you have decided to purchase VR Interaction Framework and you're probably wondering, well, what do I do with it now? Well, the very first thing that you need to do is you need to go to the VRIF wiki. And I will leave uh, links for these things that I'm going over in the description. Uh, the wiki has a lot of information about the framework and how to use it. Uh, when you first get here, you'll be greeted with this uh, welcome screen. It has the installation guide, how to install it. Uh, the project settings. So for example, if you click project settings, let's say that you were to install VRI up and then you had something overwrite your project settings, you could come here and see what the project settings were so you could set it back to the way it should be. Um, for an example, uh, it tells you how to install URP and HDRP render pipelines, um, tells you about the demo scene, gives you the device support, it gives you all the information about all these platforms um, and how to install them. Um, it goes through the core components, the core components that drive this thing, the stuff that you need to know about. So the grabber, how the grabber works, uh, the component, what each one of these settings does, and how to, you know, you need to read this. Um, it tells you about the grabbables, you know, important stuff. I mean, if you're in VR, you need to know about the grabber and the grabbables. Well, this will tell you about it and what each one of these settings does. Um, grabbable events. This one is a very important one. I use this one all the time. This script allows you to call events while holding an object. So if you're holding it in your left or right hand, you can then do things if you're holding the object. This one's very helpful and it comes in handy a lot. It tells you about the climbable, the input bridge. Uh, VRF has its own input system uh, so that you can integrate from different platforms but use the same input system coding. So you would select your input source for whatever you're using, and the coding would be the same. Um, very cool feature. I use it a lot. Um, you can use it with a legacy, or you can just ditch it all together, but it's actually honestly very easy. But it tells you how to use it in the wiki. Um, it goes over player teleport. Um, it tells you how it works and how to call it from code um, if you're just trying to teleport your players. So let's say uh, you instantiate your player and you need to teleport them from 000 to somewhere else in the game on on scene load um, you would use this script to do that um, very important stuff it goes over the buttons the switchers the levers uh, the grab points uh, snap zones uh, which are a really cool feature for any platform not just VRF but this tells you how it works um, I highly recommend you start here and just read through all this information. This is going to give you the basics about VR Interaction Framework. All the stuff that you need to know to get started is here. A lot of the questions that I see come across to me directly or on the Discord, those answers are in here. Uh, for instance, um, damage, healing and taking damage, um, it's in here. Um, it even gives an example for Emerald AI Damageable. Um, on and how to deal damage to Emerald AI, um, which is a big question because it's integrated with Emerald AI, and a lot of people use that uh, use that asset with uh, VR Interaction Framework. So come in here and read it once, twice, th you know, three times. You don't have to memorize it; just familiarize yourself with it, so that when you're building your game, when you think about it, you go, "Huh, I think I saw something about that on the wiki." You can come back and find it and reference it. That's why it's here. Um, moving on. The second thing you need to know about is the Discord. So when you get to the Discord, I'll leave a link for this in the description. You got a welcome screen. There's a lot of people on here that have been using VR Interaction Framework for a while. And uh, the, a lot of people are helpful here. Uh, BNG is very active here. Um, one thing I, I don't want you guys to do when you get in here is don't feel like you have to ask BNG. Um, every time you have a question, don't ping him directly. Just ask your question unless it's really complicated. And the reason I bring that up is before you even ask a question, actually use the search. So if you wanted to know more about damage, come in here and just say damage. 
search. Search the wiki and see if there's an answer to your question already. There probably is. Honestly, someone has probably already answered the question that you're asking. Um, just search for your question. If you've got something specific to Emerald AI, probably already an answer. Um, you probably don't even have to ask your question. And once you've done that, just ask your question. Um, and the reason I say don't ping BNG unless it's a really complicated question is, I mean, just look at this. From BNG. So since this Discord has started, BNG has answered 8,446 questions. That's daunting for anyone. Um, you know, he's a real person just like the rest of us. So I know that if I had to answer that many questions, he's way more patient than I am. So let the other people help you. There are a lot of people on this Discord. So unless it's something really complicated that specifically has to do with uh, something that's not working right, don't ping him directly. He's probably going to answer your question anyway. But just keep that in mind. He gets a lot of questions. Um, moving on. Unity. Scripting API and manual. I want to bring this section up because a lot of people will say, don't start with VR if you're a beginner in Unity. And I, I kind of agree with that, but not really. Um, Yes, VR is more complicated than just a standard 3D game. Uh, but to me, uh, VR is really not much different than just creating a 3D game. Uh, all the basics are the same. All the scripting is the same. The only difference is, is that you've added a layer of uh, having to interact with the environment. So you're, you're now dealing with grabbables. You're dealing, if you want a body, IK, which I highly recommend you don't. If you're a beginner to VR, try to make a, uh, an IK body. It's uh, complicated. Um, and to be honest, I don't even use them. I, I really don't like them. I don't like the way they, they, they feel in VR. I don't, I don't know how to explain that further. Some people like them, but they don't start with just like, I need to make a body. Don't, don't do that. Um, get comfortable with the uh, idea of interacting with objects. Uh, another reason I say that is because if, if, you, if you're new to Unity, the, the only thing that I feel like you should probably know is you should have a, a basic use understanding of Unity and C-sharp scripting and understanding how it works. So Take, a, take an intro Udemy class, uh, maybe go through some, some 3D uh, stuff on YouTube to learn how Unity works and, and how to at least have a basic understanding of coding um, and how to use the Unity API. The Unity API will tell you anything you need to know as long as you know the right question to answer. So um, if I'm trying to do something with physics, I can search physics and I can come through here and see all the physics stuff that I can do. Um, and if I know what I'm trying to do, I can probably find a way to do it just by using the API. If I've got an understanding of C Sharp script, um, you just have to have an understanding and know how it works. It's like ignore collision. Um, this is if I wanted two objects to ignore each other when they collide. Um, maybe I have a use for that, but you have to understand you have to understand the syntax of how that works to use this. So get a basic understanding of C-sharp scripting and a basic idea of how to make a 3D game before you go into VR because you're adding another whole layer on top of it. And if you don't have the basics, you're not going to get very far very quick. But once you have that, I, I say dive head first. And, and if, if you uh, are doing something that you don't want to do, then you're not gonna stick with it. So if you're just making 2D games or you're just making a 3D game thinking this sucks, I wanna make VR, then you're not gonna stick with it. But if you're trying to make a VR game and you really wanna make a VR game, you're gonna stick with it and you're gonna to try to learn and you will eventually succeed. So I say go for it, you know? Nothing keeping you from doing it. I mean, it's free, so go for it. I mean, other than purchasing a VR interaction framework, I mean, it should be free. For the most part, every asset you, you get, including Unity, is, is you could do for free. So I say go for it.
not losing anything but time, but gaining knowledge. Uh, from here, I'm going to jump into VR, and I'm going to take you through the demo scene. I'm going to show you why I start in the demo scene every time I'm trying to build a new mechanic or figure something out. So hold on a second. We'll jump in VR, and I'll show you what I mean. Okay, before we jump into VR, after you've gone through the wiki and you've installed VR Interaction Framework and you have it working um, and you've installed it for the platform that you're using, I'm not going to go into that because there's multiple platforms and I only uh, do Quest, um, but once you're there and you come into the main scene and you've got BNG's framework installed, what I want you to do is go into BNG Framework, go into Scenes, and I want you to go to the XR Demo Scene. Okay, from here we're going to jump into VR and I'm going to show you why I always start here. But I do want to point out that there's a vehicle example. Uh, there's a scene transition sample that shows you how to do scene transitions. Uh, if you want to use rigid body, if, if you are, I don't typically use this because of the type of games that I use. You could go in here as an example. Um, there's physics hands. Um, I, I know I have a video on how to create your own, but his work too. Um, I just wanted to show you my version. Um, and then there's an empty which is, I've actually never gone into that, so I don't know what that is, but go ahead and click on XR Demo, and you're going to be greeted with this, and I'll meet you in VR. Okay, just so anybody's wondering why my audio is different than my normal videos, I'm actually in a hotel in Oklahoma City, I'm on my mobile rig, so I apologize ahead of time for uh, the audio being a, a bit weak. Okay, so you're in the XR Demo scene, and I want to show you uh, why I start here. When I look at this scene, I see shopping. I'm trying to build something, and I want to know uh, what is in this framework that can help me build it. Um, a simple example would be this ball. Um, it says, oh, it's a ball. It bounces. Okay, so I see a basketball, or I see a volleyball, or I see a soccer ball that I can't kick. Huh. Um, all I would need to make a basketball game would be a goal uh, with a collider and a counter, and I get to sit here and throw a ball all day into that hoop. Um, there's weapon examples. Um, you know, if you were doing a hunting game, you would want this, or maybe you just want it for a weapon. Um, you can shoot it, and some people know you can rapid fire this thing. But, you know, you don't have to have the automatic arrows. You can make it to where you can pick it up. They have hammers. Um, Another example would be these, these ping pong balls. Um, all you need is a paddle and a table and you've got a ping pong game. Um, they bounce, it's a ping pong ball. Um, simple examples of boxes and how you can stack things. You know, you could use that for puzzles or whatnot. Um, there's this little remote control car. You could have remote control cars, but I also see an example of a vehicle, right? Um, it shows you how to do destruction on boxes, um, this launcher, um, pretty cool, maybe it's a cannon, this actually controls the power of the cannon, so you see it doesn't do anything, and you can bring it up, it'll fire all the way across the room, and then it does destruction on the other end, so catapults, I, I don't know, there's all kinds of uses you can do for that, um, it has targets, if you want to know how things get destroyed, um, don't just use these things as what they are. Use them for their code. And what I mean is, is that if I wanted to figure out how to make something get destroyed, like a box or something like that, I wouldn't be looking at the, just using this object. I would want to look at the code that he has on it so that I could build my own. Uh, Another example, I see this question a lot. Um, weapon attachment system. It's already here, and most people don't even realize it because they're not seeing it that way. Um, most people will grab a magazine and put it in. They're like, oh, that's a magazine. Yes, it is. It's also a weapon attachment system. So if you wanted to make a scope or attachments to this gun, I would be looking at this code and how this attaches and what happens uh, 
to make that happen. From there, you could make your attachment system by using the same code that he's using to attach this. And if this is attached, do something or, you know, whatever. Um, so right there is your weapon attachment system. It already exists. You just have to know it's there. Um, yeah. Uh, his snap point system. Here's the backpack. Um, if you read, read, read what these signs say. Don't just brush them off. There's important information. Uh, weapons can be configured with infinite ammo, physical reload, or timer. Um, it tells you that these settings can be changed on the weapon. Um, tells you about the ammo capacity. Just, just read it. Don't, don't bypass what these signs say. There's important information on here. If it wasn't important, he wouldn't have put it there. Um, tells you about the snap points and what they can do. The, the, you know, you can even put backpacks inside of backpacks. So I, what he's saying is I could make three of these backpacks, take a backpack, put it in a backpack, and then put that backpack in this backpack, and then take that backpack and put it in another backpack. If I really wanted to, I could do that. And that's an example of, of stackable gravels in a, in a snap point. Um, so you got to think of it that way. Um, there is markers. Um, I, I wish she had an example of an eraser. Uh, I'm going to work on that one. Um, but to me, all it really is, is if, if I wanted an eraser for this, I would probably just need like a white board and a white marker. So I would just write on a white board and then make one of these that's white and it would put white over it and then that would be the eraser. But that would be a very simplified version of that. Um, flight. He has it. Um, Maybe you want to use this at face value. Shark Jets did a very good tutorial on how to turn this into a hand jet where you're not actually holding the jet, but you could use this code for a jet pack. Um, uh, just different things. I mean, think of things that way. There are examples on, on how to use the framework to, to code it for your game. Um, he has, okay, so you've got a baseball bat and there's a ball, so baseball. That would be a very difficult game in VR, but I think it could be done. But there you go. You got it. Um, you know, you got swords, uh, things like that. Um, I love that he has the crowbar. It's very half-life-ish. Half love it. I know VNG loves, loves half-life. This has hand collision on trigger or fist. Um, if you wanted a punching bag, there it is. Make a fist, you can destroy stuff. There you go. Um, he has the hand model selector, which you can also select by clicking on on your right thumbstick. It'll change. I'm kind of partial to these. I don't know why. Um, has different examples of switches. Knobs. And keep in mind with these, they don't have to be this big. So you could change the, uh, like if you wanted a light switch, you could you could size this thing down and change the pose on it and turn on the light with it, you know. Um, think outside of the box. He's got two different types of wheels here that rotate on different amounts. But there's 90 to 90 and one, what is it, all the way around 450 to 450. Yeah. yeah. Really cool. So if you wanted to open a door or if you want to drive a car or whatever, here it is. Um, he's got another example of a whiteboard. I know that's pretty popular. Here's a mirror. A lot of people want to know about a mirror. Um, I see people ask about a mirror. There's already a mirror in here. It's right here. Um, you just got to know it's there. You got to look at it. So always look at all the stuff that's in this framework. So if you need a mirror in your scene, there's one right here. Um, there's IK. You know the IK. This isn't uh, this isn't final IK. This is regular IK. This is an example of how to do IK on uh, your player. It's not a child. It's not complete, but it shows you how the hint and the target work. Um, but you have to look at the code. Um, there's different types of ladders. Um, you know, I'm not quite remember what this is. Oh yeah, this is turnables and pullables, which is really cool. I don't know what you do with it. I don't really use that for anything. There's a, a ladder. It's just a climbing ladder. Um, piercing. 
is here. Almost two batteries in here. And this is kind of an example of velocity flick, Alex style, like get with a combination of something else. There's doors, sliders, things like that. There's everything you think of. Um, there's even an example of um, doing a rag doll with uh, removable body parts. I mean, he's pretty much thought of everything. Most of the time, if you're trying to do something, um, he's already got an example of it in here. Um, climbables, um, he's got ladder and pole. Really destructible box. Um, I do want to point out this. Um, he even has two examples of uh, teleportation. So he's got this one that is a teleport destination, which teleports you somewhere, which is way up on top of everything. Way up here. And then, and then let's see if I can. He has another teleport destination. Way up here. So if you guys are wanting to learn how to make portals, here it is. It's right here. This is a portal. Teleported back to zero. So he even has an example of portals. Um, just all kinds of stuff in here. He's got uh, kind of little ladders. You know, this is a very basic ladder. But what I see is you can take this and shrink it down and put a rock in front of it. And you've got a rock, a rock climbing wall. Um, he's got zip lines, to, an example of that. Um, you know, just all kinds of stuff. Explosions. I saw this one earlier. Um, there is an example of an explosion. Um, it's not a grenade. I mean, I've, I've made a tutorial for making a grenade, but there are explosions in this that you could look at to make your own. It's the barrels. They explode. The code's here. Yeah. To use this framework is, is to use it as its namesake. It is a framework. Um, you just need to look not only at the object and say, I'm going to put that sword in my game. Look at the code that drives it and manipulate that code in a way that fits what you're wanting to do. Um, the basics are here. And with that, I think I'm going to call this one a, uh, an end and a final. And I hope you found it informative. Uh, stay tuned for uh, episode two coming soon. Thanks for joining.